A few years ago, there was a college student with some of the best mutton chops you've ever seen. He was relatively new to being a true gamer, and there was a sale on Steam for Assassin's Creed. He decided to get it there, and he enjoyed it. All of his friends told him he needed to play it on a console, though, because using a controller just felt better for the game. So that summer, he bought a copy and fell in love with the game. He immediately decided to play Assassin's Creed 2 and loved it even more than the first. As he was preparing for Assassin's Creed 3 that year, he learned that he had to play the other two Ezio games in order to get the full story. So he bought Assassin's Creed Brotherhood and it was the best one yet. He did not hesitate to play Assassin's Creed Revelations. But then the game turned out to be lesser than Assassin's Creed 2 because of various poor game design choices. However, he still had high hopes of Assassin's Creed 3 because there was no way Ubisoft would keep bad gameplay choices from Revelations. But they did, and made worse ones. And the game was one of the worst pieces of freaking crap you ever get sir! Look, after that abomination of a game, I had lost all hope for the Assassin's Creed main series of games. I thought Ubisoft could only make them worse and worse. <sighs> but, after a very generous donation from a couple of fans, I now have Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag on Nintendo's Wii U. Now, will it pull it up from the gutter that Revelations and Assassin's Creed 3 put it in? Or will it be a horrible piece of crap? I have yet to play it at this point of the video, so let's get started. Before I can get to the game though, I have to wait for a patch to download. You know, I may as well rant about it here, because why not? There was a time when a console game came out, and that was that. What you bought was what you got. Studios didn't get to fix their games after launch with patches that took over a gigabyte of space. And you could know if a studio was good or bad because they could make their games good at launch. And if there was a glitch, it could mean the difference between your sales being fine or people staying away from your products from then on. Games have become too big of projects for companies now with teams of hundreds working on them, making it impossible to find each individual bug. But I don't remember The Darkness 2 needing updates, I don't remember Half-Life 2 needing updates, and I don't remember Bioshock needing any updates. It makes you wonder why publishers get away with sending out defective game after defective game with day one patches. Yeah, PC games patch all the time, but at least if you're on Steam, they patch when you're doing something else in your computer. Like writing a video game critique script, for instance. But let's get down to the narrative. In the present, you play as nameless, silent protagonist who somehow got a job working for the Templars at Abstergo Entertainment, where Desmond Miles' brain has been opened up so we can explore his ancestors' memories, even though he is dead. While working for Abstergo, the assassins get you to do one little favor for them, and it results in you now being blackmailed by them to get a lot more information from the company, so the assassins have a fighting chance. I rather like these modern bits, but I just don't get why the person you play as is silent and nameless. It feels unnecessary, and unless there's some twist in later games where Abstergo cloned Desmond and the assassins were getting you to collect data for them so they could put Desmond's old mind into this clone, then there was no reason to not create a new character. Flavor text is everywhere in the modern day here, and HEY! Yeah, it seems like Ubisoft is making fun of their own business, even getting down to how their executives are jerks to the game designers. However, the focus of Assassin's Creed games is rarely in the present, which is kind of sad because I rather like the present day stories. In this game, you get to play as Edward Kenway, grandfather to the incredibly boring protagonist of Assassin's Creed 3. And I'm happy to say that Edward is a lot more compelling of a character. He's Welsh, for one thing, and Welshmen are cool. He also starts out by going off to be a pirate, ends up surviving a shipwreck with an assassin, kills the assassin, steals his weapons and armor, and then goes off to get the reward from the Templars for delivering what the traitorous assassin was bringing to them. One short little liar revealed story later, he escapes, steals a ship, and is now a captain in the Caribbean. He makes friends with other pirates and starts an entire republic of pirates, all to search for adventure and booty. Although he really wants to go after a certain treasure called the Observatory, something the Templars want badly. So once he finds it, he can sell it and be set for life. 
And this game has by far one of the deepest moments in Assassin's Creed history. There comes a point where Edward is getting drunk, and in his alcohol-induced dreams, he goes through an epiphany and a half. And I wouldn't dare spoil it for you. I don't know if Ubisoft has the skill to make something as powerful as that in another Assassin's Creed game again, but I would love to see more of that. I realize that the story may seem a touch cliched, and the twists taken make the story seem outdated. But you know what? I actually really like it. I especially like it more than the crap that Ubisoft had the gall to call Assassin's Creed 3. Why? Because I genuinely care about these characters. Edward is relatable. Captain Kidd is a load of fun. Steed Bonnet really warms up to you. And I freaking love Blackbeard. This will be the only time I tell you not to listen to Gaijin Goomba. Blackbeard is my favorite NPC in this game. Although I do have to ask, why are the people with mutton chops a greeny pirate, a slave trader, and a jerk? Even Disney has fallen into this trap of thinking that those of us with the best type of facial hair are villains. But come on, we're not all jerks. GET THAT OFF SCREEN! I suppose the mutton chops are a good time to go into the aesthetics. Visually, the game has some hiccups here and there. Like, there were times when everything looked blurry, and sometimes the game just looked ugly, especially at the beginning. However, it eventually comes together nicely if you take a moment to stop and look around. It keeps the semi-realistic style of the Assassin's Creed games going well, but it doesn't do anything to stand out against the crowd, especially when it launched around the time of the PS4 and X-Bone releases. However, I did encounter two visual glitches. First up, this is something we need to have a little talk about, games industry. If you're going to put in all kinds of costumes, that's fine, but can you not have them clip through the character? Look, it even happened in the cutscene! Why? This next glitch is my personal favorite. Adewale, I gave you one job. Don't crash the jackdaw while I go to gather loot to improve it. What did you do? Steve would be a better quartermaster than you. Freaking Steve. Sound design is good with all the environmental effects working well to draw you into the experience. The voice acting for every character fits well, but there's not a lot to say about it. Music is all right, but the only songs worth mentioning are the main theme of the game and the shanties. You collect music sheets in the game, and as you sail, your crew can sing them, and I really like them. Now let's get to the real reason I love Assassin's Creed, the gameplay. We'll start with modern gameplay. It's done from a first-person perspective, and you get to explore the offices of Abstergo Entertainment. Initially, you will find sticky notes that explain the Templar's mission, but later you get into hacking. In order to hack, you have to play one of three mini-games. Orbiting around a sphere, solving for prime factors, and Frogger. This would have been an opportune time to have unique games on the Wii U gamepad instead of on your TV or monitor, but the devs were lazy. Doing this allows you to dive into the lore a little bit, including how Abstergo Entertainment was made to rewrite history so the Templars looked good and the Assassins looked bad. It also gives information about Desmond Miles and other company projects. The assassins at the end tell you that if you hack all the computers to get all the information you can, they'd make it worth your while. Apparently, though, the writers didn't talk to the programmers because you get nothing. If anything, all the hacking does is explain how Ubisoft can make any kind of Assassin's Creed game they want, including one where you fight zombies. I wish I was kidding! There is a conversation you find by hacking that talks about using Haitian voodoo zombies for a game. I went out of my way, hoping that it would give me some better gear in the simulation of Edward Kenway. Or at the very least, the knowledge that the assassins would make sure the Templars didn't kill me, but nothing. It isn't worth hacking everything. Let's get to discussing the ship gameplay. You can engage enemy ships in combat and board them in order to loot them. Then you can either repair your ship's armor, lower your wanted level, or send that ship into your fleet. Sending ships into your fleet is reminiscent of the older games letting you send out rookie assassins to level them up. 
But as far as I can tell, you can't use your fleet to help you enable battles. You can only use them to get more loot and money, so you might as well ignore it. On land, you have a lot more freedom. Assassin's Creed has made a name for itself by allowing players to parkour through famous cities, but at the same time, only taking the direction you want to go as a vague suggestion, or being inconsistent about what you can climb on. If I drop from a ledge and I'm holding run in a different direction, I don't want to get onto that ledge again. I want to start running away because the guards are crossly looking at me. Also, why are there guards on rooftops that get pissed if anybody else tries to enjoy the view? I understand guards around high security areas or fortresses, but why in the regular town areas? Still, at least they're more patient than the guards in Assassin's Creed 3 because these ones will actually give you the time you need to climb down without shooting you immediately. Speaking of climbing down, remember in Ezio's storyline how we learned to grab onto ledges with a convenient button press? Well here, you can only grab a ledge when falling by pushing forward into the ledge. This sounds good, but it leads to more frustration because if you press forward, you end up going back up. Look, industry. You just learned that motion controls are imprecise. So when will you learn that control sticks, although better than moving your body, are still not as precise as a good old-fashioned button click. I understand using the stick to control where you walk and climb, but it should not be used to break your falls into smaller chunks. Parkouring through trees this time is better and more intuitive as well. Which is a good thing, because story missions take place in the wild a lot more than the last game, which had tree parkouring, but most of the missions taking place in cities. Now, parkouring isn't the only thing you do in Assassin's Creed. You actually need to kill people. And so the famous wrist blade returns with no built-in gun or hook. You can assassinate from bushes, hay, from above or from beneath. You also get rope darts, tranquilizer darts, berserker darts, pistols, swords, smoke bombs, and if you're dumb, you can use your fists. But I have to say, I miss the old blade goes in, blade goes out thing you could do when walking. A lot of the time, you have to walk slowly on the ground, and being able to do that in the previous games was cheap, subtle, and petty, but it just felt so good for some reason to hit a button and hear a shing sound. Oh, and take my advice. If you're in the area of your target and everyone is fighting you, drop a smoke bomb, then kill your target while everyone is stunned and blind. If you're still in hiding and you see your target, use Berserker darts. Because if there's anything better than killing somebody, it's having their friends kill them for you. It's great that we have so many lovely ways to kill people, but why have the treasure map and money throw options in the weapon select area? I get that they'd be useful to have for a button press, but if you're in the heat of battle, you can't pause to select your weapons like with the better AC games. It's all in real time, so trying to select your berserker darts to quickly make a guard go insane and attack his friends, and ending up getting a money toss is a very real threat. Combat feels good, yes, but it just feels a little unfair when the game tells you to counter, and yet you don't get to counter. In fact, it feels like the game is fighting you every step of the way to your victory. Aside from the traditional Assassin's Creed problems of parkour controls being dodgy, guards attacking you from off the camera, the escort missions where your friends run into danger with no desire to protect their own lives, and eavesdropping missions where you have to stay in range of hearing but every enemy decides looking at you would be something they should do, the game has a few more ways of feeling unfair. Like when you disable a ship only for it to move to an area you can't board because the area is not available at that time. Or like when you kill a target when the game tells you but it turns out you were a quarter second too late because the target has just started moving again. Or when you need to move faster than walking but if you run the guards will kill you. Yes, they removed the fast walk function for no other reason than they hate us. And how do I lose the people I'm tailing when it's obvious they have nowhere else to go? Just because I wasn't looking at them because I needed to take out the guards that would have spotted me immediately if I'd have kept looking at them? It doesn't even make sense losing them because the distance is too great if I can still see the target. I ran into one situation where I saw a target that I was meant to be tailing about to do a very bad thing that would result in a lot of innocent people dying. So I killed it before it could do it, and I got desynchronized. Why didn't you make it a cutscene where it happens if I can't stop the bad thing from happening? 
Now, in the fashion of the good Assassin's Creed games, you can get better clothing by doing quests for the Assassins to get the keys to unlock the Templar armor from your mansion, and the Mayan armor by finding the keystones throughout the Caribbean. Templar armor reduces all damage to you by 25%, and the Mayan armor blocks all bullets. However, I can't help but feel that the game should reward you for getting both by having an assassin blacksmith combine the two to create a new set of ultimate armor, like Altair's robes or Brutus's armor. And this may seem petty, but why doesn't the Mayan armor have a hood? Edward moves like there's supposed to be a hood in cutscenes, but he's just moving the air around his head. Hunting in the game also gives you a larger benefit than just selling the pelts for money. See, you can actually use these animal pelts and bones to craft new pieces of Edward's outfit and darts, respectively. You use animal pelts to increase Edward's overall health, give more pouches, and create new clothes. And when you have all the upgrades you can obtain using the parts from your prey, then you should sell those parts for extra money. You also get parts for your ship by robbing plantations or other ships, and you can upgrade your ship accordingly. Now, I'm going to talk about how they use the Wii U gamepad. They don't. Oh yes, they have a map there, and they let you have off-TV play, but honestly, it made more sense to do what I did in Mario Kart 8. Put the gamepad in its cradle and play with a Wii U Pro Controller because it's lighter and easier to hold. And the gamepad's map gives more information than the on-screen map, so having it sit beside the screen was the next best thing. I did run into glitches that affected gameplay, and I'm going to take the time to talk about them now. Why? Because if Ubisoft forced me to go through an hour update to play the game on my Wii U, I'm going to tell you how they still screwed up. First, I got to a point where Edward just kept going up and down in the bushes, meaning that I had to keep moving in them if I wanted to remain hidden. And I can't assassinate this guy. I tried twice, and I ended up having to reload from the last checkpoint. I can say, though, that the game's best points are the story moments in both the past and the present, and actually climbing and running around the world to assassinate just one or two targets. Not fighting a group of people, just trying to sneak around and kill targets. You know, being an assassin! This game certainly moves closer to that than the last couple of games, and my only wish for future games is that Ubisoft sticks to that and doesn't try to make a Revelations or 3 again. You know what? I actually like this game. Seriously, this is like my third favorite in the main series. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a B. Congratulations, Ubisoft. You've earned my trust for the next Assassin's Creed game. Pray you don't screw it up! Hey, why don't you throw me a like, a comment, and subscribe to my channel, and while you're commenting, suggest something for a video later. I could always use some new ideas.